Hello and welcome to the third instalment of the Atrium's Watercolour Workshop with me, Claire. Now over the past couple of sessions we've looked at an introduction to watercolours and we've done a bit of work on colour theory and colour mixing. This session I am going to talk through a few different techniques we can use when creating our artwork. Now in your pack you should have this sheet and it is an experimental water, watercolour sheet. There are sort of nine different variations of how you can apply your paint with the, with the different tools that you have. I'm going to go through very quickly and show you all of these techniques and then you can just rewind later on if you want to go back to any of them to try out. Then after that we're going to need everything out of our packs, our paint, paintbrushes, watercolour paper, everything to create our portraits. So I'm going to go off camera now so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. But I hope you enjoy this video and keep on watching. So the technique that we'll be looking at first is the dry brush technique. And this is where you don't add too much water or moisture to your paintbrush. In the last few videos we've been adding water to the watercolour paper to begin with but I'm going to leave it dry and show you the technique that you will get. So I'm going to get my paint out of here. Now I'm going to put a little bit of water on my brush because it won't, it won't pick up any paint if there isn't any at all. I'm going to go for this light green. This is a really good technique if you want to create texture in your painting. So I'm going to get build that up quite thick. And what I might even do is get a piece of tissue. So I've got some tissue at the side here and I might just dab that to get rid of some of that moisture. And then I'm just going to apply it and you can see how I'll put this a little bit closer so you can see and you can see how it picks up that texture and you, it's sort of a bit of experimentation whether you want more moisture on there or not so that's it with a bit more moisture but this is kind of the look that we are going for with the dry brush technique. So that would be really good for textured backgrounds. Just something with a little bit more texture to it. So let's see where I drop my paintbrush there. Whoops. But I am going to do them on these little sample pieces of watercolour paper. Because if I were, was to do it straight onto this normal photocopy of paper. I will actually show you while I've got it here. So not much paint on the brush. You don't get the same effect how you do with the watercolour paper. And I'm going to zoom that in a bit. So that's with the watercolour paper. And that's straight on to the cartridge paper. So just reinforcing the importance of using your watercolour paper. Let's try to get the camera to focus a bit more. There we are. The next technique we're going to look at is tonal grading. So we did cover this in the previous video when we were sort of talking about the different tones, tints and shades. I'm just ripping off another little sample piece there. But just as a reminder I'm going to go a new paintbrush. Get quite a big brush. A little bit of water on there, and I'm just going to prep that piece of watercolour paper. I think I'm going to go in with a nice light blue. I'm going to build up quite a pigment on there. And I'm going to start off so but Hopefully it'll come up okay on camera. So I'm going to start off with quite the 
bold and pigmented top bit. I'm going to add a little bit of water because I'm going to run out of space quite quickly with how small the sample piece is. Then I'm going to work my way all the way down. So as you can see there, we've got our gradient going from dark to light. And that's an example of our tonal grading. Now the third technique that we're going to explore is a colour wash. This is just a really simple way to put down like a foundational light colour before you start painting over it, just as to set the sort of mood of the painting. So I'm going to do this with a bit of red, but it's going to be very washed out. I'm going to barely mix it, so we don't want it to be too pigmented at all. Might even add some more water and you would just go straight in and just a thin layer and there we have a colour wash. I'm going to go in with a little bit of tissue to pick up the sort of really moisturised parts. And once that dries you can go straight back over. So it looks like I've barely done anything but if it was on a if it was maybe it's like a skin tone or something like that, it's a really good way just to fill the entire area before you start building up on more of the shades or highlights of like an organic sort of shade. So the next technique we're going to look at is the long line. And I must admit that when I saw this, I thought that I've never heard that technique before, but I later found that this is more like of a, a texture sheet as well. Um, so I think what we will do on this one is just do a variation of different lines. Although it says long line, I think I'm going to go in with a really thin brush. So you can see that. And I'm just going to go straight into the black. And show you sort of different thicknesses of lines and so I'm going to start off with a really thin one. It's almost like a hairline. You can barely see it. But that, that would be kind of... If you were going to go... I wish the camera would focus a bit better. If you were going to do something really detailed, then I would recommend very, very thin lines, very gently applying the paint and then you could maybe start to thicken it up. And you could make them even bolder. You can add even more a thicker consistency of paint to make it even more opaque. Oh, this is kind of getting the, the dry brush technique going again. But I'm going to fill that in. Then I'm going to do a final, very, very thick one towards the end. And that is applying a lot more pressure with a thicker consistency of paint. I'm just going to go back into the hairline one and just make it a little bit longer. I'm just going to show you a bit closer. So that was made with all with the same brush. So you don't necessarily need an awful selection of brushes. Now this next one is a varied wash with different shades. So a little bit of a blue Peter moment. I've got a similar one to what we did with the first wash here. I've added the very watered down red. I'm going to do it now is get my brush. A little bit of water on there. I'm going to build up the consistency of this paint a little bit more. I'm going to add just some different shades. Just random. And then I'm going to blend that in. Continuing to wet my brush, what we'll probably do is come in with a tissue 
to soak up some of that excess water. Just a little bit at a time. And then I'll just go ahead and blend in these edges. And once that dries, we'll we'll see the really nice variation of different shades in there. Even though it's all the same colour, we've been able to use it and present it in different ways. Now a very similar one next is blended. So we did a little bit of an example of this last time, just to remind you. We sort of blended from the blue to the orange and then I added a little bit of different textures on there as well. So I'm just getting a little sample piece of watercolour paper. And then I'm going to go in, I think I'm going to do an orange to yellow blend. So I'm going to go firstly with the yellow because it's the lightest colour and I don't want to get it mixed up too much with the orange to begin with. I'm going to pop that down there at the bottom. Just building up quite a, a puddle of it so that we've got enough to blend. I'm going to go straight into the orange. I'm just mixing that a little bit. To get the consistency quite thick and a bit more pigmented. Pop that at the top. I'm going to work my way down to the middle. Clean my brush. And then drag this up. And then just very carefully and gently blending those colours together so that it, it's kind of seamless. You will want to go in and, and add a little bit more of the other colours just to make sure. So there's nothing stopping you from going back and adding, adding more colours. There's no rules. So we say that's a lovely blend from the orange to the yellow. And it's really up to you when you decide that you're sort of finished with it because you could, you could spend all day really if you wanted to. But just very quickly to show you, that's how I would blend the, the orange and the yellow. Now our last three, we're going to look at layering, crosshatch and then some dashing as well. So very quickly, the layering, we would really need to apply our paint, let it dry and then keep on layering paint over the top. So I'm going to add my first layer, just similar to the wash. What colour should we go for this time? We'll go for a dark blue, let's put a thin layer of that blue there. And I'm going to let that dry while we work on the cross hatch technique. And I'm going to get my little black brush um, again, a little brush with the black paint on it, should I say. Just so we've got that bold line for the cross hatch. So your cross hatch is literally you would make some very thin lines in one direction. I would normally go diagonally, but you could do horizontal or vertical ones as well if you want. <coughs> Making sure we haven't got too much paint on the brush because 
that can end up giving us a thicker line than what we want. So I'm making a, a bit thicker than what I would just for the sake of being able to see it on the camera. And then what we're going to do is make it totally even but on the other side of the diagonal so that you essentially create a cross between the underneath diagonal. I'm just going to try and do it with my lines a little bit thinner towards this end but it does take a lot of concentration and patience so this is by no means perfect but what is? So there we are, a bit of a cross hatch And then before we go back to our layering, we're going to just look at dashing, which is another sort of way to create a technique. So I've just got my sample piece there. I've just allowed this to dry a little bit more as well off camera. So dashing, it's not really that much of a technical term in watercolouring. Um, what my interpretation of it would be is just quickly grabbing some paint and dashing it onto the page to create essentially a, a dashing technique. I'm going to go for this kind of orangey yellow. I'm just going to build up a bit more pigment on there. But I'm also going to try to keep, keep it quite watery as well just so we can see that quick dash. It's sort of like it, dashing is kind of like a you're in a rush, I have to dash. So that's kind of my, my interpretation of it. You might interpret it different to me. That's absolutely fine. So I'm just gonna quickly just dash it on. Um, what's nice as well is if you let this dry and then did more over the top, uh, you would get a really nice effect. And it's nice when you can mix other little colors with it. for a third colour as well, you'll have the red. So it's creating quite a chaotic and quick mood to your painting. There we go, it's quite abstract. Just give me brush and uh, wash there. Right, I'm gonna go back in to my layering. I'm going to do because I've mixed those colours a bit and you will find this if you if you go a little bit too excited you'll end up mixing your colours so I'm going to dry out this blue there because it did have a little bit of the, the yellow in it so I'm going to build up that very watery blue again and just to show you I'm going to just go more in the centre And that is it's quite contrasting because it's quite dark as well. So I'm going to wash that out a little bit so we can blend it. But also we can still see how that's another layer over the top. And then what you can do is allow that to dry and just continue and you get a really nice effect. It makes it more sort of three-dimensional as well, like as if it's coming out of the page or if it's, it might give it a bit more depth if you're making it darker. So there we are, it's quite hard to fit it all in the thing, but we'll, we'll sort it out. Alright, so first we looked at the dry brush. You get this nice texture. Then we looked at the tonal grading. We have covered some of these in the, in the previous videos. But it is always good to have a bit of a recap. 
and then we had the wash, we had our line variations, we had our varied wash with different shades, so it's similar to layering really, but you can also blend these a bit more so they're not as layered. We had our blending and layering. We looked at a crosshatch texture and then we did my interpretation of dashing.